This is a how-to video in our makeover series and in this video we'll be discussing how to make the padded headboard. The pillow shams are in a separate video. You will learn how we went from this to this. piece that's screwed onto that. This is with the slide in and no bedding. So if you're laying in bed you can imagine that your back is against that padded area which isn't exactly in the right spot. So the goal here is to get rid of the mirrors and make something padded to lean against and give it a little bit of an updated look. Okay, so here's what we came up with. We have an area like this that we want foamed. I didn't want to do it flat and just boring. So then I started looking at tufting. So I watched some videos on tufting and thought about doing a diamond print or however, couldn't decide how many and then while I was in the fabric store, I saw one that went like this and it had the foam panel here and then here it was all gathered. Kind of like the one that's in there. So I thought that would be a good way to do it, except we have this area to fill in. So I was trying to figure out how to do the gathering going around the corner like this. With mitering here and stretching this out like a fan so it wasn't coming to me how we should gather it so then I was talking with Tom and we decided why not just flange it we could miter the corners and we would just have a different thickness and I thought about having it thicker here and thinner here or thicker here and thinner here but now with the wrapping that we're going to do we're going to put the one inch on the outside and the two inch in the middle so here are my supplies list for this project I got a roll of polyfoam, two inches thick, and a roll of polyfoam, one inch thick. I got them at Hobby Lobby for $18 and $11. I got three yards of batting for $4.99 a yard. I have uh, my main material that I've had in the cupboard forever and I bought some contrasting for the welting. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. I have the cotton cording for the welting. Uh, we got some staples that are the quarter inch, so the most shallow we could find, and then of course some thread. And the board, which we had cut at Home Depot, um, so they got nice, even cuts. We took the measurements. They have the big uh, rotary saw there, so all set to go. The supplies I'll be using are my sewing machine, a cutting mat and cutting blade and scissors, hot glue gun, a scrap of um, poster type board to use as a, I don't know what they call it, upholstery strips, which came in a roll for nine dollars or something, so I'm just going to use this instead. Here's Joy starting her project. Here we go. We decided to dry fit the piece of wood first, which is a good idea, because the measurements that we took, that she took, <laughs> that we took together assumed that the upper cabinet was in line with the lower cabinet. But it wasn't. So we're going to have to Come around notch. here and help me lift this up. Okay. We're getting out of here because... It's 117 it's in here. 117. Got it? Yeah. Yep. 117. So we marked it off. Now Tom is going to go 
outside in the backyard and cut out the notch and then it will be a half inch gap all the way around and sand it out here <laughs> so this next part was recorded in slow motion and there's no audio but I'm talking about uh, I brought the board in and sanded it and measured out where I wanted the inner piece of the padding so the inside is thicker and then the borders are going to be thinner so I'm getting the two inch thick piece I've drawn out my measurements on the board and I've cut the foam to the size and now I need to get it mounted to the board. <laughs> We're going to do the inside, cover it with batting, cover it with material, trim the material, or staple it down, trim the material, then I'm going to sew the welting to the mitered corners for the top, staple it. Oops, the video went to slow-mo again. So I speeded it up and what I'm doing now is adding hot glue to the board so I can lay down the foam and secure it in the exact position on the board that I want it according to how it was marked out. So then I laid out the batting leaving enough to go around the edges and laid out the material on top of that again leaving enough to uh, go around the edges. Then I stapled all around the edges but did not pull it tight enough. I did like the way it was going so we removed all the staples. This is like having to rip out seams. So I really pressed down on the foam as I stapled, even catching some of it under the staple. And I did that again all the way around. Those green strips were not used in this step. And then I made sure and had everything to the right measurement so it was all even and level. So you can see by me squishing down the corner, it's creating this slope that I after where if I just go straight down it's giving me an edge so I have to really push down the foam corner and then I'm able to um, feel right at the edge and get it stapled. Then I trimmed all the fabric off making sure not to cut through to the batting just trimming the fabric so I don't have bulk on the next step so I trimmed it all the way around and I had to even cut off some of the foam that got hung up in the staples underneath. On the lower part of the screen is the part that's going behind the mattress. So I went ahead and trimmed off everything on that side, including the batting. The next step is to do the strips of fabric that'll go around and uh, first to make the welting strips. So, so far so good. So here are my choices for welting. This one, or this one's a little pattern. Which do you think? This is the trim color I picked, and it's got, it came with the black backing. And I got a yard and a half so I could have the full length of the bias, but it turns out I only need this much for the longest strip. So I'm going to need enough to go around the cording. So it's about inch, it's two inches. But I'm just going to cut the strip here. So I'll do one inch in. Use my handy dandy rotary cutter. Which may not be enough. I'll go one and a half. And the reason that you cut, uh, this is the covering for the welting. The reason that you cut it on the bias is so that it has some give. So it has a little bit of stretch to it. So I continued cutting bias strips and had plenty of material left over for other projects. And now I'm going to break out the sewing machine, thread it up, and start sewing this cover on the cording. I'm going to start with it well beyond, and then I'll be stitching it really tight. My needle is adjusted all the way to the edge. I want it to get nice and snug. So I continued sewing my welting, but I made a mistake because I did not seam the three pieces of the material first. So I had to go back and do that after I already had cut the 
courting, but I made my bias seams and those will be the two corners at the top where the uh, courting actually bends. Now I'm just going to cut the strips and first I'm going to true up edges where it was cut here. Then the measurement is about seven inches from the welting to the edge. And then I'm going to allow for the height of the batting and to wrap it around. So, because I have so much, I have plenty of material, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it a generous 12 inches. I'm just going to make it easy and cut two 12 inch wide strips here. 12 inches. have one 48 inch strip. I forgot I was cutting double. And my two side pieces. The idea is that at the corners they'll be mitered. Okay, so I finished up my strip of welting. So the idea is that we have the welting goes on three sides and then we have this piece which will be stapled down here and then we'll bring the batting up we'll add the foam we'll put everything back over turn this over and tuck it around and staple it I'm going to staple this down and it's real curvy here and I think it's it's going to be okay. And I really like my Black & Decker Power Shot because the staples come out at this end rather than this end. Most staple guns you're going like this, you're putting your force here and the pressure needs to be here so you always have to push and staple. So this I'm pushing the same direction that I'm pushing for the staples. So I really like this guy. Bring the welting up just a little bit by stapling it right on top of the staples that I had before. I'm going to start kind of in the middle. I'm not going to do a lot because I'll be coming back with the other material to add more staples. And I have to make sure that it stays the same level and straight, straight, straight. Okay, big mistake. So I'm cutting strips and I'm thinking this measurement's 22. Okay, I'm giving myself extra. Well, this measurement is the measurement that I needed. The one all the way from here to here. So, that scrap, maybe I'll do corner pieces. So I'll have seams here and here. So I'll give me a little bit more leeway here, maybe. So because I mismeasured the side pieces, I could not do the miter cut like I wanted to, or the miter seam. So I ended up putting a block corner, which actually worked out for the best. So now I'm piecing the corner pieces together. Okay, so as you can see, the whole miter thing didn't work. So I went ahead and did the corners, which is actually going to give me a lot more leeway here. So that'll be good. So now I'm going to go press these out and start stapling again. Okay, so this is definitely a learn-as-you-go project. I put the strips here to bend the fabric over, but then the batting's under here, so that didn't work. So I trimmed the batting. And these strips were a little flimsy, so I got some real poster board type and got some thicker strips, even though I couldn't get long ones. So, we're going to try again, and I thought about putting the batting without stapling it, but I think I need to staple it 
to turn it over with the fabric. It'll be a little thick there, but I think that's what I need to do. So here we go again. So I continued using the cardboard strips to get a clean edge when it comes around and stapled the batting and the material together, paying special attention at the corners, getting it really close to that rounded edge so it'd be as clear a corner as possible. Okay, I think the hard part, which was doing the corners, is done. Actually using the corner cut made it a whole lot easier to do this rounded corner than it would have been had I mitered it. And I have the batting, so the next step is to cut the foam pieces that go around the edge and I'll be using the one inch foam and I'll have to measure and mark and then um, the last part will be stapling it around. Okay, so I've installed the foam underneath the batting. Very important that there's a single layer of batting. If they overlap or there's a gap, it was showing. Now I just need to pull it tight. Um, I tried beveling this a little bit so it wouldn't look so squared and I wouldn't have to tug quite so hard. And I think it's going to take two of us to get this pulled around and stapled. So I'm most concerned about the corner, so I want to pull the, the seams here and here first, and then here and here first, and then not get gaps, so I'll do it spaced out. But I, if I pull it here, I've got to shoot this way. Why don't you flip it over? Well, then I can't see it. Maybe I should stand it like this. Finished stapling behind. I have to turn it on its edge a little bit to get it pulled tight. And now it's time to finish it off with this area. I do one more piecing of the fabric because the, the width of the headboard is wider than the fabric. And then I stapled it using the um, pieces of poster board. And now I'm going to, rather than just put it straight on the wood, which is what I was going to do, I'm going to put a layer of batting here um, and wrap the batting around just to give it a little bit of a cushion. Okay, so I've got the batting over it, just with a couple staples to hold it in place. And then the final step will be to staple this down and take it around to the back, and it'll be done. Here's the back of it. <coughs> I wrapped the bottom around and pulled it from the back. So there it is, the finished product. The green in the welting should match the color of the bed cover that we have. So I'm really excited to put it inside the motorhome, but it's going to have to wait until the weather cools. So on a day with air conditioning, Tom helped me put it in place. We had to take the lights off to get it behind there. And then he did the test to make sure that we could lean up against it, which was our goal. And that is the finished product. Thank you for watching.